A couple of things have come up this morning that I want to discuss. I've been in contact with someone who's going through a very hard time. And I think that what I'm discerning is what I have seen over and over, first in my own life and then in others. And that is that this person is being called. But when we're being called, we're not usually being called when everything's good in our lives and we don't feel a need for God. It's usually when everything's crumbling in our lives and God is showing us that we messed up our own life. We messed up our own house. The best we did as parents was garbage. The best we did according to what we were taught in the world was garbage. We achieved everything that we set out to do. So why do we feel so miserable? Things like that. I achieved more in my life than I ever thought that I ever imagined that I would achieve in my career more than any of my colleagues. I don't know anyone in my field who achieved what I did. Why was I dying? Why was I miserable? Why was I over drinking? Why was I out partying? distracting myself all the time until I was completely bedridden. Why did God need to bring me to that position? The reason he needed to bring me to that position is because God's heart is that we're going to know what we've been given. We're going to know who we've been. We're going to know who we are, that our righteousness is filthy rags before him. We're going to be convicted. We're going to be brought into position to finally understanding and conceding to who we are and who he is. We're going to be brought into a position of understanding that we don't deserve even the extension of this gift. Someone said to me this morning that someone they, that they know hears from God from time to time and is a Christian. And it seemed to be that that was their basis for saying, you know, for understanding that this person is a Christian, but they also were admitting that this person is in a cult. This person's in a cult. They're making decisions that are contrary to the word of God. Let me tell you what the definition of a Christian is. The definition is, of a Christian is one who worships God in the truth and in the spirit. The definition of a Christian is one who hears from God and the word and does what it says. Just because you're hearing from God doesn't say anything about your character or who you are. It says everything about him, that he's speaking. Whether or not you obey defines whether you're a Christian. Because whether or not you obey defines whether you have faith. You are not going to be justified by what God did. You're going to be justified by what you've done in your heart. Because that's the only way that you'll even receive what God has done. So to say that God speaks and that you're hearing from God means nothing about you. It only means that God is faithful and that he's speaking. God was speaking to King Saul and King Saul spurned him. What did that mean about King Saul? All it meant is that God gave him an opportunity to be king of Israel and he spurned God. If you are making decisions, if you're hearing from God and you're reading his word, but you don't do what it says and you are making decisions that are contrary to the word of God and contrary to the heart of God, how can you call yourself a Christian? He brings you low. He brings you low when he calls you in and your job is to respond by examining why did he need to bring you that low for you to finally listen. Another thing that I heard today is a person saying that they've been codependent in their relationship. I want to tell you what codependence is. I've talked about it on the channel before. Codependence is outright idolatry. So when you say, when you use the language of God rather than the language of the world, it takes it up a notch, doesn't it? When you say, I have been setting my partner up as an idol. I've been setting my spouse up as an idol. Does that feel a little different to you than saying, well, I've been really codependent in my relationship? There's a difference in accountability there. Because if you've been codependent, then the course of action that you're going to take is according to the world. And you have no understanding of what course of action actually needs to happen in order for you to be healed. But when you admit the truth that is written in God's word, which is, I have been idolatrous, I have been setting someone up before God, and that's why I'm in the position that I'm in, now you can heal. Now there's a solution before you. Because now what you need to do is you need to return to God and set him up first in your life. You need to examine why it is that you've been setting up idols in your life and repent before him. And he will heal you as an individual. And then he will heal your house over which he has placed you. And the reason why he heals you is because he intends to activate the purpose for which you've been set apart in his house. When you do well with what he has given you, you'll be given more. And you will be given more in his house. And the more that you will be given is responsibility. It is honor in the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom. You don't get to continue to live a life of self. 
I hear people consistently tell me that they're getting drugged through the mud and they really need a break and there's, you know, all of these things happening. Please pray for me. And I do pray for you. I want you to know that. But I also pray with understanding. I don't pray as counterfeit Christianity prays. I don't pray for those things to be taken from you. I pray for you to understand why they were sent because I know that they were sent by God. I know that there is a sovereign God who is causing those circumstances in your life in order to bring you in. He's calling you. Again, if you phrase things as the world does, you're not going to understand. You're not going to understand why you're being brought low. For example, if you phrase things as though Satan is doing this, then you're going to be on the defense. You're going to feel like you're attacked. You're going to feel like there's no power inside of you. But you've been told that the spirit in you is greater than the spirit in the world. And that doesn't mean that you get to scream it away. Because actually, Satan isn't the one sending those things. He can execute what God has given him permission to execute, but the one who's in control is God. So if you understand and you believe in a sovereign God, and you believe that he's the one sending these things, and that he hands you over to the spirit you've chosen when you've chosen a different spirit, then you will understand that the thing that you need to do is is examine how you got there. There are too many people calling themselves Christian that don't understand what the truth is, that aren't, have not rent their heart to what the word actually says. And so they're stuck. They don't know where to go. They don't know how to heal. And it's because they haven't believed. It's because they've been listening to the world in psychology and the world in counterfeit Christianity telling them what their condition is. But you have an entire instruction manual that God gave you to understand what the truth is. Don't say that he dropped you off here with no instructions. That is your instruction manual. And he told you what your condition is. And he told you why it is that he sends disease or mental illness or hardship or discipline. He's told you why. He has even told you that he doesn't send more grief than is necessary. He does not send grief willingly. He sends it when it's necessary. He sends it in order to discipline those he loves. Here's the order of healing. You need to heal as an individual. You need to return to God and you need to let him deal with you as a son or daughter. When you begin to engage in that process of healing as an individual, he's going to begin to move you and teach you how to manage the house he's given you. When you have done that and you've proven that you are worthy of a trust, worthy of a trust, am I speaking my own words? No, I'm speaking the words of the word. That's what Paul said. Those who have been given a trust must prove worthy. So no one is using their anointing incorrectly. No one should be using that. No one should be saying that. I've heard people say that too many times. If someone has truly been given an anointing by God, they're going to use it correctly or God is going to take it away. God's not a dummy. He doesn't hand out power to people who use it for themselves. There's absolutely no precedent for that in scripture. Those who have been given a trust had to prove worthy first. Not after, first. The next thing that I want to talk with you about is, again, regarding this codependence. Codependence, as I've said, is idolatry, plain and simple. There are codependents who try to control, they over-function, and there are codependents who under-function and avoid the situation, they flee. There are cowards and there are controllers. But the bottom line is that they have set a person up as an idol. And everything that happens in relationship, when they start to feel scared, they either try to control that person or they run from that person because that person is dominating. They've set that person up. It's the same thing in abusive relationships. They have set that person up. And the world makes it seem like this is just, oh, this is just like a type or something. (laughs) It's a type of person. Like, no big deal. Oh, yeah, I'm really codependent. And then nothing is done about it. Or the person goes to therapy and they get even worse because they act out that codependence with a therapist, with one more idol. If God is first in your life, you're going to be moved by him to correctly relate with others. He's going to teach you how to correctly relate with others because you're submitted to him first. He's not going to hand you over to the spirit of self-idolatry or other idolatry that you've chosen. So whatever you have chosen in your life, God has handed you over to it in order to be brought low. The word says, for the destruction of the flesh that you might be saved on the last day. Do you understand that? That's a thing. That is real. That is the pattern of God, that he respects your choice 
and he hands you over to the spirit you've chosen for the destruction of the flesh, that you will be brought low by your own decisions so that you will come to understand that you are not in control, that your best efforts have messed everything up in your life. Is God cruel? No. What he's doing is being a responsible parent. He's handing you over so that you can come to understand logical consequences for foolish behavior, for foolish decisions. A lot of us did not experience responsible parenting. Our parents did not allow us to experience reasonable consequences, true consequences to our behavior. They rescued us from it or they imposed harsh burdens on us, which never even taught us because we taught, we learned that everything was unreasonable. But we have a perfect father, a perfect father who knows what is good and knows what we need and knows what needs to happen in order for us to be brought into the position to finally submit to him. He knows how to tame an unruly calf. And if he's doing that with you, you're blessed. You might be one of the ones only if you respond. Remember, you can hear from God, you can read the word, but if you don't obey it, you are not a believer.